We hope to elect three members of Parliament in just 60 days' time, two in East London and one in Birmingham. And if it's a hung Parliament, I hope it's a hung Parliament depending on three votes. And if it is, <laughs> if it is, well, stranger things have happened. If it is, our conditions for supporting our government will be this. The uh, start is made to a major national house building drive to house the overcrowded and homeless people in many parts of the country, giving a boost to the construction industry, the steel industry, and the other industries that are, uh, because investment in construction is tremendously productive in job creation because of the sheer number of different trades that are involved in construction and the making of the materials. Secondly, that we use our ownership of the banks, our ownership of the banks, which we never asked for, but for which we paid through the nose, to use those banks to reinvest in resurrecting British manufacturing capacity. Reopen the coal mines that have not been irrevocably flooded and invest in clean coal technology. And last but not least, a date we set for the withdrawal of British forces from the foreign wars that we've been sent into around the world, not least because we have no energy and fuel industry of our own, and save those young men from being killed in foreign fields for the fat cats that Edwina Curry represents. because our panel have got to move on. I will come to you in a minute, sir, if I may. But I'd like the panel, start with Mike and come round the table, and then, George, thank you. It'll be able to come after that to, to wind this question up. Well, George mentioned a hung parliament, and I think they all should be hung, basically. <laughs> I, I think they should be hung as traitors for two reasons. First of all, they've sold our country away to a foreign power. And secondly, they sold away all our industry and betrayed the working man and, and betrayed in so doing so the entire fabric of this country. It's time we in this country ruled our own, our own government, made our own laws, provided subsidies if necessary to industry, but not everybody can be on a subsidy because if everybody's on a subsidy, there's no money to subsidise. So we have to look at... We have to look at economics, and we have to be choosy, but the coal industry won't need subsidy. I'm telling you again, we make the cheapest coal in Europe at the moment. It's statistically there. And again, I'm telling you, there's 200 years in deep mine coal, and even more in open cast that you won't want to talk about, because I know I, I helped the open cast survey as a chartered surveyor many years ago, and they're hiding it all over the place in case of an emergency. We've got loads of energy in this country, plenty of time, to find out new technologies to bring us on for energy in the future. Yes, UKIP would go nuclear, but UKIP <coughs> would also invest in coal and clean burn, because it is clean and it can be done. Only look at your refuse incinerators, you'll see if they can do it, we can burn coal and make energy as easy as wink. And that's, that's my message on coal. Okay, Edwina, please. Thank you. I, I think most people realise that the first thing any government has to do, whether it's a hung parliament or not, is do something about our horrendous deficit. Because if you don't, well, now listen. Because if we don't do something about our horrendous deficit, British sovereign debt will be downrated, and then you really can all worry about pensions. Then you can really all worry about all sorts of aspects of the way that the economy runs. And this would be a, a, a serious lurch downhill in ways that could not be put right uh, for a very, very long time. That's very, very important to be done. Um, David Cameron said that what he wants to do is cut taxes on business. I'd add to that. I would, I would do something slightly different. I'd do what Russia has been doing, which is cut taxes on everything. Russia has a flat rate tax. It's 30% it's tax on income. Wouldn't that be nice? It's 30% tax on, uh, on business profits, corporation tax. That would be lovely. And it's 13% tax on expenditure, on the VAT. What you do then, as, as, as we found out over 20 years ago, is actually more money comes in. More money comes in. 
because more people are prepared to come to register their businesses and to pay the taxes. And then you've got more money with which to do all the things that George wants to do, that I want to do, whether it's infrastructure, uh, whatever it is. But at the moment, at the moment, we've been spending money we do not have. We've all been spending money we do not have, and government in particular. And until that is put right, we're not in a position to make any decisions about the future. That's got to be the priority. David Henry. Well, well I, I, actually, I, I would disagree with quite a bit of this. One, um, when you say we've been, we've been spending money we haven't had, we've actually been spending money giving it to bankers who basically nearly bankrupted the country. It's not, I mean, I wish we had been spending more money on services, but actually most of it was going to... Health services not important? No, health service is important. We have spent some money. It's not improved? Uh, I guess it has improved. Of course it's but, 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 I think there were, two, there were things I would watch. I would not actually rush to cut the deficit immediately. Because if you do this, the thing I've talked about is going to throw hundreds of thousands of people out of work. It's going to mean that major cities that are already in trouble, people are going to have less money. I would reverse the capital uh, plans for massive cuts in infrastructure, which the, is the moment in the government. And I'm afraid I would introduce some new taxes. I don't know how much they would raise, but I am absolutely fed up with non dom Lord Ashcroft type figures who think they can use this country as a nice place.